Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from the Gnostic tradition of Samael on Vior. Gnosis is the root wisdom of all the world's great religions. Gnosis is a universal teaching of practical science, whose goal is absolute liberation from suffering and the complete development of the human being. This lecture is one of many, available by free download or podcast. The hundreds of hours of lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. Each Saturday, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live. The live lecture is accompanied by an online chat, allowing listeners to read additional explanations related to the lecture and providing an opportunity to ask questions of the speaker. To learn how to participate or tune into our continuous web broadcast, visit our website for more information at GnosticRadio.org. Gnostic Radio is made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. For more information or to make a donation, visit our website at GnosticRadio.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Aleph, the first letter of the Kabbalistic alphabet. <coughs> we said Aleph Bet, of the Kabbalistic Aleph Bet. Aleph is also the first letter in the Arabic alphabet, but they pronounce it Alif. And of course, from this uh, letter, we write different names. <coughs> Elohim which is precisely the word for gods and goddesses. We always specify that because the Hebrew word for God is El, written with Aleph and Lamed, El. But the word Elohim is a plural word, plural word which uh, means gods and goddesses. Also, the other word that we find written with Aleph is Eloah, Adam, and uh, many words related, of course, or that uh, point at divinity. As, uh, uh, I remind you, for instance, that uh, most of the names of different angels end with El, Aleph Lamed, like Samael, Sahari El, Orifi El, etc. The letter itself is written with three letters. Aleph, Lamed, and Pei. That in the Latin language or Latin letters is associated with the letter P or F. That's why sometimes we can write Aleph with an F at the end or with a PH at the end. 
because uh, the letter P or the alphabet could be either. So the letter Aleph, of course, is written with three letters, I repeat, Aleph, Lamed, Pe. And uh, it is necessary to talk about this because the name of the letter itself is associated with the air, with the wind. We find that uh, the letter Aleph uh, has the value, numerical value of one, since it's the first letter. The letter Lamed, which is exactly at the half of the alphabet, has the value of 30. And the letter P is the value of 80. So if you make the addition of 80, 30, and 1, you have 101. In other words, three ones. We will say three A's. <coughs> and of course, it is because the letter Aleph by itself symbolizes the wind, air, among the elements. And is associated with the letter, uh, I mean, with the sephira, keter. When you see the tree of life, you see that the first uh, sephira is a sephira uh, keter, which is the first sephira of the tree of life. That uh, in synthesis, we will say 111. Oh, I said 101. Uh, sorry. My bad, as they say, is 111, 111. So, you see, for instance, if you associate these three ones, then you associate them with the three triangles, I mean the three sephiroth or the first triangle, Keter, Chokma, Bina, one, 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 because each one of them are one, that's what the, is called the Holy Three Unity, or Holy Trinity, and uh, that's why you find in the shape of the letter Aleph, Three yods. What is the letter yod? It's just a dot, spot, a point. When you give the first struct, when you are drawn in the, the letter, or any letter, that first struct is precisely the letter yod, which is just a point. That's why it is stated that all the letters emerge from that spot. For that dot, right? The dot. And of course, that's why that dot is associated with Keter. From the holy name Yod, Hey, Bab, Hey. So the first letter Yod is Keter, or the first triangle. But since Keter, Chokmah, Binah are the Holy Trinity, the Holy One, Three in one. The letter Aleph is made of three spots. So you see, there are three points. You see uh, in the right of the letter the Yod, then the one the vertical transversal line, which is another Yod but stretched, and that makes what we call the letter Bav. Just one line, straight. And beneath that vertical transversal line, you find another yod, <coughs> which is, of course, the third stroke of the letter. If you modify, if you uh, move the letter in order to make the line straight, vertical, and then you can uh, see by yourself 
the throat and the two lungs. I mean, if you imagine, if you uh, imagine that the air that you breathe enters through your nostrils, goes through the uh, throat into your lungs, and this is how we are alive. This is how we breathe. So imagine that from the nose directly to the lungs is precisely the letter Bava or that yod that stretches, making one line. And the two yods in the right and in the left make the lungs. So this is how this uh, marvelous letter is associated with breathing, <coughs> with air. Every time that we breathe, we are uh, putting into our lungs the three primary forces. Or what the Matthew Samael on the or calls in many books the three forces of the Akashic breath, the positive, negative, and neutral forces of the Akashic breath. So that is precisely how uh, we see the holy three unity in the letter Aleph, in the breath, in the air that we breathe. Remember that uh, it is written that God blow into our nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life, of course, is associated with the letter Aleph, which means air. And uh, there is a name, for instance, associated uh, with the air in the book uh, of uh, Popol Vuh, which is Huracan, <coughs> which is a Mayan name. Huracan is the root of the word hurricane that we know in Maya means uh, a leg stretch legged huracan kakulha is how they say in, in Maya. So that huracan uh, kakulha is precisely Keter, the wind that uh, touches heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Or we will say that touches the waters of heaven and earth. Because the letter I left also symbolizes the superior waters and the inferior waters that is still are not separated. You remember in the book of Genesis that uh, in the second day is when God, the Elohim, divides the superior waters from the inferior waters in order to make the firmament in the middle. Well, the letter Aleph symbolizes all of that in one. The superior and the inferior waters, not separated yet. And of course, in the uh, Mayan Bible, that is represented by the hurricane. Huracan, Kakulha, it says. The lightning that flashes from the waters of heaven to the waters of earth in one. Because if, when you see a hurricane in the ocean, you see that it touches the waters in the ocean and the waters in heaven that is called Shamayim in, in, in Hebrew. Of course, the Mayan Bible also states that this, uh, this uh, hurricane Kakulha actually is three. And they call it Kakulha, uh, uh, the sun, and Kakulha, the third. Yeah. So, as we say, The hurricane, of course, symbolizes the elder of days. The, the great wind, the huracan, that is uh, 
the beginning of everything. In Christianity, of course, the three forces that we are naming here from the Mayan Bible are called uh, in Christianity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which, as you know, represent the three primary forces, Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, which are not uh, uh, people, but forces, energies, related with the wind. So this is how, uh, let me read for you, the three gods related with the wind, for the letter Aleph. Kakulha Urakan, the lightning wind that blazes across the waters of heavens and earth. Then, Raksa Kakulha, the lightning that strikes the earth. And Chipi Kakulha, the lightning that flashes from one cloud to another. This is what you see when you see a, a hurricane. The three forces, you know, in one. And of course, you see here the association of this uh, Kabbalistic statement of the Mayan Bible, which is very, very Kabbalistic, with uh, the statement in Kabbalah that we state that uh, Keter is the great wind, the air itself, represented in the letter Aleph. And of course, <coughs> when you uh, examine the different religions, you find that uh, these three primary forces are uh, named in different languages. For instance, if we go to Mexico, uh, in the Aztec, uh, Aztec pantheon, we find that the god of the wind is Hecato that uh, actually I think uh, you already read in the website. We have there a statement where it is uh, stated there that Master Jesus' uh, resurrection is associated with the angel Ehekato, which is the god of the wind. When this angel Ehekato is associated with creation, they say Ehekato Quetzalcoatl which actually is a second aspect of this trinity in the Aztec pantheon. And uh, the third aspect is Tlaloc, which is also called Tlaloc Quetzalcoatl. The three of them, of course, are associated with the wind, when you name Ehecatl. And uh, in the Hindu pantheon, this holy trinity, as you remember, is uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. In the Nordic Edda, these three primary forces of the letter Aleph are named Odin, which is a, uh, that is rooted in uh, Otin or Otila, the, the rune Otila. And from that uh, rune Otila comes the name Attila. Because you know, it was like a hurricane in, the, in his times, destroying uh, a lot of countries and towns. So this Odin has two children, Balder and Thor. And actually Thor, it says, is the god of the thunder. If Odin is the father of thunder, of course, Odin also symbolizes this wind with Balder. So that's the Holy Trinity that you find, as you see, in different uh, religions. In the ancient Egypt of the pharaohs, the three of them together are named Osiris Ra. And of course, this is... Uh, very significant because uh, when you study Gnostic Kabbalah you find that the three primary forces of the universe represented by the hurricane, by the wind of Keter expressed in different names and different forms 
in different religions. And this is how you find the association of the letter Aleph. That, as you know, you pronounce A, which is the first letter in all the alphabets. Alpha, A. A in Spanish, A. Alif in Arabic. So, A actually is the first sound that any child emits after his birth. And it's really like a scream because he is inhaling the air and cry. So that's the first sound, you see, which is the letter Aleph. If you see the symbols of the three letters that write the name, the name Aleph, you will see how this, the letter Aleph by itself, when rotating, is like a swastika, like a swastika, like a fan. This is precisely the wind, the hurricane, when it is rotating, spinning, is making the air that descends through the letter Lamed to your head. Because the letter Lamed, as you see, is made by a straight line that's called a tower that is hovering in the space. So the first dot or point from the letter Lamed is, of course, representing Keter. That is the force that is taking from Aleph, the wind, and descending in your head, which is formed by the letter, the, by the other shape of the letter that goes like a half circle that descends a little bit to the bottom. So that circle, of course, is the brain, is your head. Hmm? The tower or the power of God coming from Yod to the letter Vav into your head and arriving at your throat. Hmm? Because when you pronounce the letter A, you do it with your throat. Ah. Ah. Hmm? That's why the next letter in order to write the letter Aleph is Pe, which symbolizes the mouth. That's why it's always represented with a let a, a, this says a teeth, or I mean a thought, what I'm saying. Uh, a tooth. A tooth that is hanging from the mouth. But actually that tooth is another another letter yod, as you say, the yod. Which means is the air, is the power of Keter going through your throat, to your mouth. Ah, ah, left. So you see in the shape of the three letters naming Aleph, you are seeing how the power of the wind comes down into your head, into your throat, and you pronounce Aleph. The wind, the air is coming out. That is the beginning of the word. The sound ah. Remember, it is written, in the beginning was the word. The word Aleph was with God. And Aleph was God. This is the beginning with God in our body. So if you want to inquire how God enters into you, into your body, and how God expresses itself through you, well, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Right now, for instance, I am pronouncing, I am telling you, and that sound that comes from above into my head, into my brain, into my mind, which is abstract, is pronounced to explain to you through my throat, 
through my pay, in other words, to my mouth. But first come from Lamed. But this Lamed can, can have no power if there is not a left rotating on top of it. And that's the wind, Allah. And it's the same way, you know, that uh, in Arabic you pronounce the letter A, Alif. And when you write in, in, in Arabic the letter Alif, you find, of course, there's different, different uh, symbols here. Because the letter A in Arabic is just a straight line. And then the letter L is like a, a U. But since the letter, the name Allah has two L's, you have two U's there. Like, look like a double, double U, right? Or the letter Shin. Allah. Another line, straight line, vertical. This is how they write the name Allah, you see, in Arabic, right? The W there is two L's. And of course, Above this letter, or this Allah, you find uh, another symbol there, which is a circle with a horizontal line of the, of the Arabic alphabet, which is F, or Fa, Fa, as it says, the, the letter Fa in Hebrew, which is Alef, also, or Alif. So when you see this symbol of Allah, also you find the letter F, which is Alif. Simple, ah, Allah, Alif, Alef. You see, because both uh, alphabets are rooted in uh, uh, the Shemite word or, or the Shemite. And of course, uh, most of uh, other languages are rooted also in this. Actually, it is stated that the Hebrew alphabet and the Arabic alphabet derived from the runic alphabet. Because also you find another symbol from the letter Aleph, which is just a, a straight line with a, uh, other two lines cross. One is uh, perpendicular and the other is horizontal, making the letter uh, Aleph uh, in the, another hieroglyphic in the ancient times. And of course, uh, uh, you find here another name, for instance, or another word that is, is good to you to remember or to describe for you is another word that is called El, which is God. And another, in Hebrew alphabet, there is another letter, which is called the letter Ajin, which also sounds Ah. But also that Ah, according to uh, uh, explanations, is an Ah that sounds here in the throat. Aleph sounds Ah, left, you see, out. But the letter Ajin is here, Ah. Which for us is difficult. But in Arabic and in Hebrew, they also have these two sounds. A ah, that goes out and the A ah, that is there. And this is how you find, for instance, uh, that uh, name of uh, these uh, flights from Israel, which is called El Al. That means the high God. Because all with a gene, means high. And it is very significant because the word Allah also has two A's and two L's, like El Al. You pronounce that, I understand that is the force is coming from the letter A, or Alif, above, Allah, and descending in your throat. That's why uh, uh, in Islam, they pronounce everything that is written in the Quran by singing. This is a beautiful uh, way in order to point all the laws of God, you know, 
by singing. And they called to prayer. To pray all their Muslims by singing. And they sing all the, the, the surahs of the Quran with uh, this with the throat if you pay attention to the to the word of course uh, uh, this word of ah or this uh, action of the throat of the lungs coming from above saying the truth saying the what is wisdom saying the doctrine ah um, it's also you see the different mantras in india you find that they uh, pay attention very much to the mantras. And the main mantra in India is a u m. Mm. And that is, of course, has the same meaning, the same significance. That when you open your mouth, you have to understand that the power of God is expressing through your throat. Allah, Allah. You see? It reaches here in your throat. And uh, that's why agnosticism, you find the mysterious sephirah, da'at. You see that? It's dalet, ajin, tav. It's not alef, but it's ajin because it's, it's the sounds here in the throat, ah, ah, da'at. And that da'at, of course, is knowledge. But that knowledge you cannot develop if the letter Aleph doesn't descend through the letter Lamed into the throat, which is the pay, the mouth, the hurricane, the power of the wind. Imagine, for instance, that you cannot breathe, you cannot talk, you will die without the air. That's why that air is Keter, the father of all the lights. And that's why that is the Sephira, the mysterious Sephira, related with creation. When we say in Da'at here, you see, in, it's because the Aleph is pointing at it, it says, in the beginning, Ah, was the word. And the word Ah, was with God, Alif, Alef, Allah, and Allah, God, Alif, was the same word. All things were made by Him, or by this breath of life. This is how the Gospel of John begins. Now you understand why. We have to take care of what we say because when you lie when you utter the word in vain you are hurting yourself because that is the force of God that you are expressing through your mouth you shall not pronounce the name of God in vain that's the second commandment Listen carefully. The second commandment. Shall not pronounce the, the, the name of God in vain. And of course. That is not also only associated with yod he bab he, But the power of the word that we have to communicate wisdom. Knowledge. To the multitudes. This is how you have to grasp it and understand. The marvelous symbol of the letter Aleph. And when we arrive at this point, astrologically, we find the sign of Taurus. The sign of Taurus, of course, rules the throat. Hmm? You know that. The sign of Taurus is a sign of the bull. Alef, alif, means bull, ox, cattle, cow. Do you see the, the, the relation there? 
how the cow, the bull, the ox is associated with the throat, the zodiacal sign, and the rules, that, of course, it comes into my mind, the sacred bull apis of ancient Egypt, spouse of the divine cow, and he, their child, or Kabir, the calf. And of course, here you find the, the three forces. Apis, the great bull, that's a symbol, of course, of the word. You see, for instance, if we go to the south, to Texas, or to uh, Colorado, where they have a lot of cattle, you know very well that they had to use their throat in order to control all of those bulls, cows, when they are guiding the, the cow boys, mm -hmm. are guiding them. And uh, there is also uh, something beautiful here associated with this, with the sounds of the throat, with Aleph, in, the, in that country above uh, China, which is called Mongolia. In Mongolia, you find these singers, throat singers, that they learn how to sing, but they, they learn how to sing that because also they control the cattle with their singing. If you go on the internet, you will find these uh, marvelous uh, singers, throat singers, uh, that control the animals in that way. Of course, we have to understand that the bull Apis and the sacred cow that is worshipped in India is a symbol of the power of the throat, the power of the word that we are talking here. This is the, the, the deep symbol of, of the bull, within which we find the constellation of uh, the Pleiades, because the Pleiades belong to the sign of Taurus in the sky, and the Pleiades are our own particular constellation. The sun that is shining above us is that star that belongs to, uh, to these uh, uh, stars of the constellation of uh, the Pleiades which are in the constellation of Taurus. You find the association. Of course, the cow is the symbol of the forces of the earth that we have to manage. The bull is the power of the throat, the sound of Alif. But the bull, uh, has to be sacrificed. The cow has to be sacrificed in order for us to uh, uh, develop our own particular spirituality. The word sacrifice comes or derives from sacred an office. You see, when you are in an office, to officiate. When a priest is officiating, he's doing the sacred of, of officiation. And there's the word sacrifice, a sacred work that we have to perform with that with the power of the bull. But the bull has the opposite. Remember the golden calf that the Israelites were worshipping instead of doing the right thing? They were, of course, uh, worshipping the golden calf, which symbolizes the power of behemoth in the earth, related with the gold, with the riches of the earth. Instead 
of developing riches in heaven, we, or the Israelites, were developing riches in the, on the earth, in Malkut. This is precisely uh, what uh, we have to understand when we enter into these uh, studies. That we do not have to develop wealth in the earth. Or better said, our goal shouldn't be to develop wealth in the earth. But in heaven, as Master Jesus says. Make your treasures in heaven and not in earth. Because in heaven there is no thieves. But in earth there is a lot. But when we enter into this knowledge... We want to make always treasures here. We want to be famous here. We want our name to be uttered, you see, by many. And people think that because our name is uttered by many, we are good. There are many individuals <coughs> that think that in order for somebody to be a master, a lot of people has to utter that. Like if mastery is a matter of saying it. The one that is a master doesn't care if he is not recognized. There are many masters that are not recognized that their name is unknown. You see? Unknown. That's why it is, it is also said in, 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 the, in the Gnostic uh, tradition. Uh, hallowed, holy, uh, sacred and hallowed be thy name. The, your unpronounceable name. Blessed and hallowed be thy unpronounceable name. The name of your inner being, of course. That uh, we had to keep or kept in silence when we know it. Because to utter that name is to bring the forces of God from above. That's why in uh, Gnosticism we state that there are certain mantras which are very powerful that should not be pronounced in vain. The first one is the name of your inner particular individual God. And there is another, others, that you shouldn't pronounce in vain. Because when you are an initiate, you are developing power in your throat. Because the letter P, as you see, which is the mouth, goes down to your sex. This is how the power of Aleph works in your body. When you are performing sexual transmutation, you breathe. In hell, retain the air of God, transmute the sexual energy, and pronounce to your mouth, e -a -o, or many other mantra. Now you understand why the throat and the breath is associated with the power of sex, which is connected to that, to your throat. But the mystery of Aleph. So, of course, we have to be careful with what we say when we know the, uh, these uh, mysteries. There is, of course, an angel that controls. The letter Aleph, the breath of God, the wind, and is associated with Keter. His name is Metraton. That's that angel that is before the altar of God in the world of Atziluth, the world of the archetypes. If you remember, we stated that the whole alphabet that we are studying here was brought by Metraton. That when he was uh, with physical body, 
in the earth. His name was Enoch. The prophet Enoch. Of course, he delivered the 22 letters <coughs> and the meaning of them that we are explaining here. But this uh, Mitraton is also asso associated with another uh, uh, master from Persia. Mitraton, Mitras, Mitras, Mitraton. Mitras is precisely that uh, uh, great master that uh, uh, developed his religion or his knowledge in Persia, which is now Iran or Iran. Mitras is symbolized with a sword and is slaughtering a bull. So behold the association. The bull is associated with the throat. And Mitras is symbolized the slaughtering of the bull and it's the slaughtering of the, the it's cutting the throat. It's not killing the bull like miserably the toreros do. By killing the bull, you know, in the back there, certain the sword in order to kill the poor animal. There's uh, Mitras killing the bull or slaughtering the throat of the bull. is of course, a symbol with a throat. And we are explaining here. A leaf, ox, bull, the aleph. The power of God is in the at. When the, the sword, which are also symbolized by the rays of the sun, because Mitra symbolizes the sun, as UN, the rays of the sun that rises in the spinal column through sexual transmutation. That energy that arises in the spinal column develops the sword of the angels. Actually, that's why we call it the flaming sword of the angels. When that fire that rises from the coccyx, that sword reaches the throat, then you find the slaughtering of the bull, which blood that emerges from the throat fertilizes all the archetypes that we have within and they develop spirituality. That's why in the symbols of Mitras slaughtering the bull, you find that the blood that is gushing out of his throat is being licked by a dog. That dog is a symbol, of course, of the sexual power. But also is a snake, a serpent there, that is licking the blood, which, of course, is associated with the sexual power. But that uh, we can take advantage of it in a positive or negative manner. Because the serpent is also associated with Ariman of the Persians, which is the actual Shaitan or Satan of the Bible, which is nothing but the sexual force. So the mysteries or the Mithraic mysteries is something that we have to go deep in the study of them in order to comprehend all religions because all of that emerges from it from this Mithraic mystery or Mithras slaughtering the bull symbol, I repeat of the forces of the earth because the ox, the bull itself symbolizes the physical body that we have And Mitras is that force of the father, Mitraton, that had to descend and give us the power of the word. You know, we had to develop the power of the word within us. 
the word of God, in other words. But for that, we have to sacrifice to make the sacred job, the sacred office of slaughtering the animal elements, the bullock that we have within. That's precisely uh, uh, the point here. But this beautiful uh, myth of Mitras encloses a lot of wisdom, you know. And behold, that even the Quran starts with that second surah, which is called the cow. And this is how you write the cow in Arabic, al-kabara, al-kabara, al-kabara. Is the longest surah of the Quran. They sing that. Hmm? You see? They sing that cow, bull, the power of the throat, which is the power of God. If you read, for instance, Al Kabara, or Al Kabara, I'm trying to pronounce this because it's Arabic, you find that if you take the, the syllable, R A Ra out of what means cow. Al Kabara means the cow. You see there the letter A and the letter L. All, all, all of Aleph. So by taking the letter R and A out of the of that name, you find Kabbalah. Kabbalah. That's why it says that Kabbalah is a science of the back. Oh, and now you see, it comes into my mind, John, uh, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, written of course with B-A-C-H, Bach, which is a composer that for me is great. He wrote too many cantatas. And people enjoy singing to God because this is precisely what Bach wrote. Many beautiful songs to God. Hundreds and hundreds of them. You see, is this that a, we call it a coincidence that his name is Cow because the translations of Bach is Cow. John Sebastian Cow, Bach. You see, sometimes I think there is not coincidence there. His name was Bach because he was working with the throat and teaching everybody, making beautiful music, beautiful cantatas in masses that you can play there anytime because he, he wrote more than a thousand uh, works. John Sebastian Bach, that's my, my favorite uh, composer. Related, of course, with the cow, with the ah, singers, prayers, mantras, the power of the wind of the lungs, which are united there with the lower waters of sexuality and the superior waters of heaven. In one letter. So when you sing, when you pronounce the word ah or any mantra, you are uniting your sexual forces with your throat. Hmm? This is what we do through the spinal column, of course, which is the bav. Behold, the aleph, the lungs. Isn't it beautiful? How we see this, how this Aleph, if you associate the letter Aleph with all that we are telling you, you understand why is the first letter of the, any alphabet. And listen to this. I'm going to read for you part, just part, of this surah of Quran. Only part because it's too long. 
It has like 286 verses. I will be here forever, right? So listen. From the verse 70, I mean 67 to the 74. Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad said this in the cow, the surah, the cow, al-Baqarah. And remember, when Moses said to his disciples, surely Allah commands you that you should sacrifice a cow. They say, do you mock us? He said, I take refuge with Allah from being one of the ignorant. They said, ask your Lord for us to make it clear to us what she is. What she is, you see, naming the cow. Moses says, surely she is a cow, neither old nor young, but of middle age. So do what you are commanded. Sacrifice a cow. Anybody that read this might think, oh, Moses is saying, take a cow, a bull, and kill it. Now, it's related, for instance, to the sacred office, to the sacrifice that we had to do. This cow represents, of course, our physical body. To sacrifice this cow, because remember that Malkut is always feminine. And that's precisely the body of the Divine Mother. Because the bull apis is in the throat. To sacrifice the cow means to enter into the mysteries of that. And to sacrifice all the animals. The bullock that we have within. The behemoth that we have within. And to develop with the blood of the cow. The sacred forces of God. That blood, of course, is a symbol of sexual transmutation, the fire that rises. That's why it says she, because the power of sex, as we said in many lectures, is always female, she. And they said, ask your Lord for us to make it clear what color she should be. Moses replied, he says, she should be a yellow cow, bright in color, giving delight to the beholders. Of course, that yellow color is uh, the color of the Divine Mother. The Divine Mother Kundalini, the golden force that rises in the spinal column. That's the golden cow. Not the golden calf. Because the goal of the golden calf relates with the riches of the earth. In this day and age, people are worshipping the golden calf. Money, wealth, gold, intellectualism, fornication, adultery. All of that is the golden calf. But this car that Moses is telling you is yellow. The Divine Mother. Which, of course... When you work with the forces of sexuality, with chastity, then you see that the Divine Mother is energy that rises in your spinal column with a yellow color. And when, they, when she reaches the throat, and then a violet purple color shines in your throat when she unites with the bull apis. They said, as your Lord for us, to make it clear to us, what kind of cow must it be? For surely to us the cows are all alike. And if Allah wills, we shall surely be guided all right. Moses said, verily he says, verily she is a cow not yet trained to till the soil or to water the fields, sound and without blemish. You see, that cow, that power of creation is in our sexuality. But when you don't know about the mystery of that, you don't know how to put in activity the powers of the cow, the powers of Malkut, or the powers of E.O., 
as in Greek mythology says, that this goddess, Eo, was transformed into a cow in order to escape from the persecutions of Jupiter because Jupiter was in love with her. So in order for, uh, when Jupiter found that she was a cow, Eo, and then Jupiter became a bull and have her. You see, everything is the same symbol. But this is the sacred sacrifice, the sacred work that we have to do with the bull. They said, now you have brought the truth. They, then they offer her in sacrifice through they had not the mind to do it. Though they didn't have the mind to do it. Right. I mean, in the beginning, they didn't understand why Moses is asking them, sacrifice a cow. But it is, of course, the mystery of the, what we are explaining here of Alif, the cow, the bull, the ox, a work that we had to do with this uh, primary forces in our body. And remember, when you kill a man, meaning when you fornicate, when you kill the man inside of you, when you are fornicating, and disputed thereon, but Allah was to bring forth what you were hiding. I mean, Allah, the power of the word, when we work with these uh, energies, have the power to resuscitate the dead. All of us, intellectual animals, intellectual bulls, bullocks, we are dead for the spirit. But if we sacrifice the cow, if we work with these mysteries of the Mitras, then Allah, God, El, Elohim, Eloah, will resurrect us. Have the power to resuscitate the dead. We are the dead. Don't think superficially and thinking that the dead are, of course, a, a corpse there that is dead and that Allah is resuscitating a, a dead corpse. No, this is a symbol of us, spiritually dead. Thus Allah gives life to the dead and shows you of his signs, so that you might understand. Then your hearts harden it after that has stones or even worse in hardness. For verily among stones there are some from which rivers gush forth, and others that split asunder, and water issues out of them. And others stumble down through fear of Allah, and Allah is not heedless of what you do. The sacrifice of cattle, cows, bulls, is a horrible crime when you don't understand the meaning of the scriptures and you end doing uh, sacrifices of bulls or cows. It's a crime of these people and of this lunar race. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Mohammed, and many other uh, were worshippers of the sacred Ka, as we can uh, uh, prove this when reading this surah, which was the second and longest surah of the Quran, written or dictated by Muhammad. So you realize that? Do you understand? Of course, if you carefully read that surah and interpret it, in the right way, you will understand why Mohammed wrote and entitled it Al Kabara. The cow, for the power of the throat, the power of God, Aleph, Alif, the bull, ox. And how the Holy Trinity expresses itself through Alif, even the Three letters is a trinity. When people talk about the Holy Trinity, or the three forces, the three primary forces of the first triangle of the tree of life, people think that uh, we are expressing three different things or people. But in this lecture, we are explaining to you 
that God has no form. Because the first expression of the letter Aleph is the wind, is the air. What form has the air? The wind. But when it expresses, of course, you find a hurricane. And it's showing that the power. But that wind has no form. That's God. That's why it is written that in the beginning, the spirit of God, the wind, are left, was hovering upon the surface of the waters. And that's precisely the symbol of the letter Aleph. Because the power of God is symbolized there with the superior and inferior waters divided by the letter Vav. And uh, do you have questions? Well, the question is why it is uh, uh, forbidden in India to kill a cow and why is the cow sacred in India? Of course, that uh, derives from the same symbols that we are talking about. Because the cow, the sacred cow, as you see, is a symbol of the divine forces of nature which expresses themselves in our physical body. So when Moses is saying sacrifice a cow, you know, saying kill an animal there outside, which is the, from a, a cattle. No. He's saying sacrifice a cow means perform the work with a cow, with the divine mother, mm? which is, of course, in your physical body, which is a bullock. Renounce to the animal elements and develop that fire of the cow, which is the sacred cow. And that's why uh, uh, the bull, a white bull, is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit, of Shiva. Shiva is above as a bull, and the Divine Mother, the sacred cow, is below, also white. Both male, female, you know, are the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Of course, I don't know if all the Hindus know about this, because they follow uh, the tradition of their, of their sex. Mm -hmm. But that is, is the explanation, because in ancient times, people that misunderstood the messages, the cryptic message of the masters, they were making animal sacrifices. And even in the Bible, in the Bible described in the chapter 29 of the book of Exodus, the way in which people should kill a bull. Matthew Samael on the or explains in one of his books of astrology that that chapter, the whole chapter 29 of the book of Exodus, is authentic black magic. It's attributed to Moses, but Moses didn't re uh, write that. It was modified or inserted there in order for people to uh, 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 misunderstand the message of, of the masters. Question? How can we understand a left when reading scripture? For example, in Adam, Abraham, etc. Well, you see, Adam begins with A, with a left. Because a real man, the true man, begins with the breath of God. Remember that it's written. And God breath or blow the breath of life into the nostrils, as we explain, of the man. And the man became a living soul. Of course, there's a, the, the deep meaning. The real Adam, the real man, has to have the breath of God within. One thing is, for instance, when we breathe now physically, and we are alive physically. But also the animals, the monkeys are alive by breathing, right? 
So what is the difference between a monkey and us? That we have the breath in the Shama of God within, if we reach that level. In other words, we have to develop that within. And that's precisely uh, uh, the word Adam. That's why it begins with A, meaning that the three primary forces that we explained that are symbolized in different religions should be inside of us, incarnated. That's why you see the first hieroglyphic of the book of the tarot. You find a man, a priest, that is there. One hand is pointing down to the ground and another is pointing heaven. It's the letter Aleph. That's the true Adam that has the three primary forces in him related with the body and the two yods, which are the hands or the arms of it. And of course, Abraham is related with the second letter, Bet. How the Spirit of God creates with the letter Aleph. Because Aleph, Bet, Abraham. Hmm? That's the, our own particular individual spirit inside. Aleph represents there in heaven, Keter, the father of all lights, the ancient of days. But Abraham is the spirit inside of us, our own particular individual Chesed. That's Abraham, which is the fourth immediate Sephira after the Holy Trinity, Keter Homa Vina, Chesed. That's Abraham, inside of us. So God, the Aleph above, makes his work of creation, Ah, through the letter Bet, Abraham. I mean, uh, uh, that, that's another lecture. Hmm. Yes, another question? Well, uh, it was added. When, I don't know. But uh, the date was, uh, I mean, the books of uh, Moses were modified by Ezra. And uh, were modified and added many things that uh, Moses didn't write. If Moses himself will come and see this, I'm going to read my Torah, my five books that are attributed to me, he will be amazed. He says, what? Why many things here that I didn't write? Right? Some of the things that Moses said is, is written there, but many things are added by the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, as Master Jesus said. Now, it seems to me like Aaron, both Hebrew and Arabic are similar languages. Are they related to one another? Are they, is one from the um, from the other? In other words, is Arabic derived from Hebrew? Well, Arabic, the question is, are Arabic and Hebrew uh, related? Yes, Arabic and Hebrew sprout from one original language. The Aramaic, the Shemites, that spoke that language. And of course, this is also rooted in other languages from the past. Actually, the language that was spoken in Atlantis was a language called uh, Akaldan. Oh, no, excuse me. Watan is the language. Akaldan was the society that was studying that language. Watan is the original language from which Chinese, Hebrew, uh, Arabic, uh, Greek, Latin, many other languages sprout, even Sanskrit. Is the Watan language the same language that they mentioned on the website that they speak of, a language of gold that you could no. no, no. Is, is the same language, Watan, and the golden language? No. But then their eyes from the golden language. Hmm? So I have to study intuitively um, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Watan, Greek, get to 
Yeah. Well, the best thing is to transmute the sexual energy because the golden language is there in your sexual force. So when you transmute it, you understand all the language of the world. That is called the power of tongues. But in order to get that power of tongues, you have to be in chastity. It's a long process. All the languages are in our sexual energy. Because this is how the throat is related with, with the sex. You know? The at, the bull, the energy of uh, Aleph, the bull. Yes? Well, uh, the question is, is there any significance because the letter A is after the letter Yod or I in the mantra E-R-O? Well, I explained that E is Yod and A is the same Yod, isn't it? And O is the letter Vav of Aleph. Of course, I, the letter I in Latin, in Hebrew is Yod. And the letter A from the Hebrew alphabet are three yods that we already explained. So Iao is, as we explain here, E that comes from above, from a left, E, and then through your brain goes into your throat, and you said, Ah, and places it in your heart. Oh, that at the same time makes to vibrate the sexual organs. Mantami Iao, as we said, is related with the pineal gland, in pituitary gland, the lungs. That's why we said that the mantam A is related with the lungs. Now you understand why. I said the two dots of the letter Aleph are the lungs. And from the nose to your lungs, the vav, that's A. And that's why you are vocalizing the mantam A Put in activity the chakra of the lungs. Ah. And in the sexual transmutation, when you said E, he's pronouncing the O, which is Keter as well. You see? Yod in Aleph belongs to Keter. E, Ya, O, the Vav. Because in Hebrew, there is no vowels. The letter O is a Vav, a straight line. E, Ya, O. Is related with the lungs. It's in relation with the power of the heart. Because the heart is between the lungs as well. Oh. Another question? Everything emerges from A. The question is, uh, isn't all the words in Arabic beginning with with A or in the Quran, I believe, Al Kabbalah, Al Kabara, Alif, Allah, because everything comes from God. You see? And the L is precisely the symbol of the spinal column or the forces that enters into your body through your nose. That's why the, the sacred name in Arabic of, of God is Allah, you see. But for me, in my understanding, is I see the two letters there of the Hebrew alphabet. The letter Aleph and the letter Ayin. A coming from above into my brain is Al. And I continue the second L and pronounce that with my throat. La, Allah. Is here. The life of my body is Allah. The power of my body is Allah. It's God. It's Aleph, Alif. You see? It's in me. That's why this is a sacred word for the Muslims. Because it's associated with the breath. El Al. The higher God. El Al. Inside of you. And all is rooted in the breath of God. Now you understand why in Arabic they said 
That's the highest name of God, Allah, yeah. Because without Allah, you cannot be alive. You, you will die immediately if that breath goes out. But when that breath enters into your lungs, then you are alive. But we have to put in activity that breath through the path of initiation by worshipping the cow, al kabara al al kabara everything begins there this is what i understand you have do you have another question Hashem, the name. Baruch Hashem. Well, you know, there are just uh, an, uh, other letters that we will talk in other words because Hashem is of course uh, other breath also that we take. <sighs> Comes into my mind, for instance, the priests among uh, the Mayans and Aztecs. When the Spaniards, the priests from Spain ask the Aztec priest, how do you name God in your religion, in your race? And then the Aztec priest only did a deep breath in, in inhalation. <sighs> that was his answer. Beautiful answer. What is God for you? And that's pure Kabbalistic answer. The breath. Do you have a, a question there? The word all, uh, as what you said in English? You mean A L L? Yeah, all. Also, you see that that's precisely a good question, because A L L means everything. Oh, L hmm. L everything. Yeah. It could be because all the uh, alphabets, all the letters, are associated with the breath of God. Of course, uh, uh, unfortunately, in our planet, we have so many languages, right? Derived from the original golden language, of course, right? So we lost the root of the sacred language year, years ago, of eons ago, we'll say. But now, of course, with the study of this uh, Hebrew alphabet and ancient alphabets, we go into the root of our origin, which is precisely the word, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we study the association of TH, T, and many other uh, sounds in English that, don't, that you don't even pronounce in this day and age, because there are some words in English that are not related in the way that we pronounce it, like, for instance, if I said it is enough, you will say E-N-O-F, enough. No, you don't write it like that. But you don't pronounce those letters. So, you see, it's a, a crazy language, really. And all the languages are like that. Because we lost many sounds. Still, in Arabic and in Hebrew, there are many sounds. Like the sounds of the letter Aleph and Ayin. Some like similar, ah, uh, ah, uh, no. One is out and one is in. But we, uh, sometimes we cannot do it because our language is not related with it. But the natives that speak the Hebrew and the Arabic, they know how to pronounce those uh, throat sounds, which are very difficult for us. As we say in Spanish, ojalá, I hope in God. You see? There's a, a, a word in, in Spanish, ojalá, ojalá. 
I hope in God this is the meaning. We all said, Ohala. And many other words, because uh, Arabs entered into Spain, you know, to conquer Spain a long time ago. You know that. And many words were inserted into Spanish or into Castellano, as we say. So all the languages are a mixture of many other languages. Yeah? Of course, uh, the golden language is uh, spoken by angels in the internal planes. If we learn and we develop our consciousness, and we awake and annihilate our ego, the golden language will sprout automatically, naturally, from within. Because this is the language that is spoken by the angels. And of course, Hebrew is derived from that language too, as Arabic and many others, the, the Sanskrit. But uh, the only way to learn that is through chastity, through the initiation. Because the word itself is Christ that encompasses all of it. Whosoever knows, you see, that is knowledge. Whosoever knows, the word gives power to. No one will utter it. No one uttered it. But only the one that has the word incarnated. So we have to incarnate the word. And that is done in the fifth initiation of the mirror mysteries, if we follow the direct path. And then the word develops in you and explains all the mysteries of any religion. I hope this uh, was a simple lecture. I try. Yes, your question? Well, the, Hebrew, the question is, why are the numbers related with the, uh, with the Hebrew letters? Because every, every letter is associated with a number. From 1 to 10, and then from uh, 11 to 20, are related with uh, other numbers. As you see, if you uh, find a chart of the Hebrew alphabet, you will find the value of each letter related with every single letter. That's why when you read in the Bible, in the Hebrew letter, and you make additions of the value of those letters, then you go into the arcana, and you find the meaning of the word by numbers. This is precisely something that develops very uh, patiently. It's not easy. But uh, that's why uh, uh, if you uh, have a chart of all the 22 letters, you will find the value of them and how the, uh, the Kabbalists associate that in order to explain what we are explaining here. Aleph, Aleph, Lamed, Pei is 111. 111 equals 3, the Holy Three Unity. Thank you very much. The presentation of this lecture was made possible by donations from listeners like you. Help Gnostic Radio to help others. Make a donation by visiting GnosticRadio.org. For questions and deeper understanding of this lecture, we invite you to explore the wide variety of resources available on our websites. Thank you for your support. May all beings be happy.